Today we're going to look at solving related rates. If you want to follow along in your workbook, we're working today on page, starting on page 9. So first we need to do a little review. We're going to look at reducing fractions or simplifying fractions. So first of all, when we have a fraction, for example, we may start with the number 12 over 16. The top is referred to as the numerator. And the bottom is referred to as the denominator. Now, to reduce a fraction, what we need to do is we need to find out what these numbers have in common. So if we look at the numbers 12 and 16, 12 is, has factors 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. These are all the numbers that make up, that you can multiply to get that number. 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. And 16 would be 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Now, the largest numbers these have in common is the 4. And if we divide both of these by 4, 12 divided by 4 is 3. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So 3 quarters is the simplified version of 12 over 16. Okay. Another way to do this, which would create more steps, so it, it may not be the quickest solution, but sometimes you may not identify 4 as the largest number. You may identify that both of these are even, so you may start by dividing them both by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Now you've reduced it, but you haven't simplified it fully because these are also still even numbers. So we can still factor something else out of these. These are both divisible by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And now you can see we have the same simplified numbers. Sorry, the same answer as the previous question, for example. Now, a second thing we'll be looking at today involves related rates and how to solve when we have an unknown x as part of our fraction. And we have a fraction on the other side. So we have a fraction equaling a fraction. These are rates. And they're related because they're equal to each other. Now, to find out what this missing letter is, there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, I think the quickest way to do this is called the fish technique. And it's called the fish technique because we're basically going to draw a fish. So if we start above or below the x, in this case the x is on top, so we're going to start below the x, we're going to draw a fish. So hopefully you see that fish shape. And now from where your fish started, it's going to be times and then divide. So this will be 5, follow the fish, times 4 divide 20 equals the answer we're looking for. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 divide 20 is 1. And hopefully you can see that 1 over 5 is 4 over 20 as a reduced fraction. So let's look at another. Let's look at 12 divided by 16 equals 18 over x. In this case, the x is not on the top. But for our fish technique, we're going to start above or below the x always. So in this case, if the x is on bottom, we're going to start above it. So we start at the 18, and we draw our fish. 
And the fish technique goes times, then divide. So we start at 18 times 16. Divide by 12. So now I want you to try one on your own. Try this one. Go ahead, pause the video. Try it, and then I will show you the answer. So go ahead and pause. Okay, hopefully you tried it. If you did, using your fish technique, starting above the X, draw your fish. In this case, 15 times 12, so we always times, then divide by 3 equals x. And 15 times 12 equals 180. Divide by 3, and this is 60 equals x. So 15 divided by 60 is 3 over 12. And you can check these by trying them in your calculator. 15 divided by 60 is 0 0.25. 3 divided by 12 is 0 0.25. Okay, now the last part of today's lesson is working with a ratio. And a ratio is a comparison of two numbers using the same units. So when you're comparing two things, make sure they're both in the same units. So it would be meters to meters, inches to inches. So how we will write a ratio, there are two different ways. The first way is using a colon. It could be 4 to 1, or it could be 5 over 7. So ratios are written either in colon with a ratio form or as a fraction. Now let's see this as an example. So here's our example. A shade of pink paint requires three drops of red and two, two drops of white. What is the ratio of red to white? So red first, white second, because the question asks, what is the ratio of red to white? Now the question tells us it is three drops of red, two drops of white. So our ratio is three to two. Or in fraction form, three over two. Now, we can use what we learned in related rates at the start to solve a problem now that we have a ratio. If you use 90 red drops, how many white drops do you need? So, we have 3 over 2. And when we're going to solve a related rate, fraction form works best. Equals. Now, the important part is red was on the top, white was on the bottom. The question was red drops compared to white. Now make sure on the second half red is on top. And the question gave us 90 red. So if we had three red on top, two white on the bottom, we need 90 red on top. Red's on top, red's on top, and we want to know how many white. And now we solve this as we learned earlier using the fish technique. 90 times 2, divide 3 equals x, which is 180, divide by 3 equals x. 180 divided by 3 is 60. It will take 60 drops of white. So now your assignment for today that goes along with this In your workbooks, starting on page 10, you can do all the questions up to question 8 on page 17. So from pages 10 to 17, all the questions up to question 8. Now this looks like a lot of pages to work, pages 10 to 17. Um, however, there's a lot of examples in there. If you struggled with any of the examples today, look through your book and you should find some solutions in there.